Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, wherever you are. Come on, let's give God glory this morning. This is truly the day the Lord has made. Our God has made this day, and we make a decision to rejoice and be glad in it because he is God, he is king, he is sovereign over it all. Amen. Bless the name of the living God this morning. This morning we are in the first Sunday in the year 2021 and we just want to give God praise this morning. Amen. For it's due unto him. Amen. We want to lift our hands in praise. We want to lift our hearts in praise. We just want to give God glory this morning for he is truly a good God and he is worthy to be praised. Thank you for coming in the room with us. Thank you for tuning in with us wherever you are. Just begin to give God glory. Just begin to give him praise. Hallelujah. Those that will watch on the replay, we send blessings to you in the name of Jesus. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. He deserves our praise. He deserves our respect. He deserves our honor. And so with our hands lifted up, we give him glory. With our arms wide open, wide stretched wide, we honor him and praise his name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hands up. We give him glory. Hands up. Come on. Wherever you are, give him glory. Lift your hands and give him glory. Come on. Get, lift your hands and just worship him and honor him this morning. Hands up. Hearts open wide as the sky. We lift you high. We lift you high. Hands up. Hearts open wide as we cry. God, we lift your name high. Come on, wherever you are, just say, Hands up. Hearts open wide as the sky. We lift you high. We lift you high. Hands up. Hearts open wide as we cry. God, we lift your name high. Let all, let all the other names fail.
just this morning, but each and every day, I dare you to just open up your mouth and acknowledge and allow him to take your place. It's 2021, and it's time to put away all old things, put away all old gods, put away everything, and acknowledge this morning that you are, are allowing Jesus to take his place in your heart, to take his place in your mind, to take his place in your soul, to take his place in your family, to take his place in your plans. Come on this morning, wherever you are, tell the devil today is the last day that he has any plan in your mind, in your life, in your heart, in your decisions. Today you make a decision to say, Jesus, take your place. And I will not put you out, but I will evict the devil. I serve him notice. This morning you are evicted. You and all of your friends and family must go. Depression, you must go. Oppression, you must go. Disobedience, you must go. Lust, you must go. Pride, you must go. Haughtiness, you must go. Selfishness, you must go. Sin, you must go. Everything that's in opposition of the Lord Jesus Christ, you must go this day, right now, and I make a decision and I acknowledge with my mouth and with my heart that Jesus, I need you and I want you to take your place. You have place in my heart, in my mind, in my life. I give it all to you. Every room, every aspect of me, I give it to you. Wherever you are, just lift your voice, open up your mouth and say, Jesus, take your place. 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 Jesus, take your Father in heaven, Lord God, we come before you, Lord God, with our hearts open, oh God, with our hands lifted high and open wide to you, Lord God. With outstretched arms, Lord God, we call upon your name and we acknowledge you as God. We acknowledge you as the sovereign king. We acknowledge you, Lord God, of the ruler of the heavens and the earth, Lord God. We acknowledge, oh God, that the earth is yours and the fullness thereof. And we dwell in the fullness of your of this earth. So we belong to you, oh God. We exalt the name of your son, Jesus Christ, oh God. We acknowledge him as savior and king and redeemer and Lord. We acknowledge him, oh, oh my God, and we make room for him in our hearts oh God Jesus take your place in our hearts in our situation in our life right now Holy Spirit you are welcome in this place you are welcome wherever we are oh God we've come together oh God with one mind and one heart and that is to lift up the name of Jesus and Lord God we believe that as we lift him up as we make room for him this morning oh God your spirit will move in the name of Jesus touch hearts touch Touch minds, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Break shackles, oh God. Set free, oh God. Make whole, heal spiritually, financially, and physically, oh God, this morning, oh God. We're believing still, oh God, that you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask and even think, oh God. We're believing, oh God, that you are still doing miracles right now. We are, Lord God, expecting, oh God, signs, wonders, and miracles to take place right now and even on on the replay, we believe that there's even more power in, Lord oh God, your word and in the gathering, oh God, that they will experience, Lord God, your spirit, experience, Lord God, your word, experience your love, oh God. We thank you, Father God, that you loved us so much, oh God, that you were willing to give up what was precious to you, oh God. So now this morning, we make a commitment to you that we love you so much that we're willing to give up everything over to you, oh God. We give ourselves away to you, oh God. Have your way, oh God. We believe, oh God, that you, oh God, are our redeemer, oh God, our strong power, our way maker, our healer, our defense, oh God. You, Lord God, oh my God, are in control, oh God. And we cast every care upon you, Lord God. Touch the hearts of everyone that is listening right now and will listen later. Lord God, we pray for hearts to be soft, Lord God. Tear up the fallow ground that your word may permeate through, oh God. Touch ears, oh God, to hear clearly, oh God. Touch minds and give understanding, oh God. 
God. We bless and magnify your name, oh God, and we do lift our hands high, Lord God. We open up our hearts to you, Lord God. We make way for you and we make room for you, oh God. For we are your house, oh God. We are your house and we are your temple and we desire for you to dwell within us, oh God. We desire for you to be glorified, oh God. We desire, Lord God, for your love to, Lord God, exude in us and through us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We lift up those, oh God, that are suffering on any level, oh God. We're praying, oh God, that you, Lord God, would dispatch your ministering angels, oh God, to touch them where they are, oh God, to bring relief, to bring glory, your glory, oh God, to, Lord God, exude your love, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Wrap around your arms around those that are mourning, oh God. We're believing, oh God, that you are able and you will give beauty for ashes, oh God. You will strengthen those, oh God, that need to be strengthened, oh God. You will, Lord God, give the garment of praise to those that are experiencing heaviness, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that we can come to you boldly, oh God, because of the, your son, Jesus Christ, because of his precious blood, oh God. And Father, we give you glory and power, and we bless your holy name. Wherever you are, just begin to give him glory, just begin to give him glory, and say amen and amen. Open up your mouth and say, Jesus, take your place. Take your place in my heart. Take your place in my mind. Wash my mind and cleanse my mind. Take your place in my family, in my situation, in every aspect of me. Take your place. I give you authority, authority to rest, rule, and abide. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you all this morning. Thank you for, amen, joining us this morning as we lift up the name of Jesus, as we come together, amen, lifting up his name, believing and trusting in him to build our lives one stone at a time, understanding that we are in a process, amen, expecting progress from the Lord, amen. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. The reading of the word this morning, amen, will come from Psalms, the 40th chapter. Psalm 40 says this, I wait patiently for the Lord. I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. I want you to know that no matter how long you have to wait, God is listening. God does hear. Rebuke the enemy that tells you that God does not hear you. God does not love you. God does is not concerned about your issues. God hears but wait patiently for his response. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, and if he did it before, he'll do it again, out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and establish my goings. Bless the name of the Lord, Lord God. We give you glory for establishing our goings. We thank you, Lord God, for putting us on a rock, a sure foundation, Lord God. And he has put a new song in my mouth. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. A new song in my heart. A new song. Even praise unto our God. I praise you, Lord God. I praise you, sovereign king. I praise you, O oh God. Many shall see it. Amen. And fear and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust. If you want to be blessed, you ought to trust him and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside of two lies. Many, O Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works which thou has done. You know, we've got to focus more on the wonderful works of God than to focus on what's not going right and what we're waiting on and, and what and, and how we feel, but we need to focus on his wonder, wonderful works which thou has done, and thy thoughts, which are to us, Lord. His thoughts are to us, Lord. Bind the hand of the, in the mouth of the enemy that tells you that God does not think of you, that God does not have you on his mind, yeah. that his thoughts towards you are a, a, not of a good and expected end. God loves you, he hears you, and he has you on his mind. Yes. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than they can be numbered. I'm going to read that one more time. Psalms 40, verse 5. Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are which are to us ward. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. 
sacrifice and offering thou didst did not desire. Mine ears has thou opened, burnt offering and sin offering has thou not required. Yes. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of a book. It is written of me. Bless the name of the Lord God Almighty, Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. God himself has come in the volume of a book. It is written of me. Therefore, we are to read the words that are written that we may know of him and trust in him. The psalmist says, I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Bless the name of the living God. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, I have not refrained my lips. O Lord, thou knowest. I have not I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. Bless the name of the Lord. This has been the reading of his holy word. May you be encouraged to know that God has you on his mind. And in having us on his mind, it is our duty, amen, to lift our voices and sound the alarm and tell of his goodness and his mercy and his graciousness and his loving kindness. And as we tell of it, amen, sound, speak loud that the enemy may hear it, that he may know that you will not believe another lie that comes from him concerning how God feels about us us and how God loves us. For God so loved the world. That's enough right there to be excited about that he loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, whosoever, he did not discriminate, whosoever will believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Come on, bless the name of the Lord wherever you are and give him glory this, this morning. Amen. How many know that there is power in the name of Jesus? We just got to activate that power. The power is there. It's waiting to be activated. When you buy a house, they've already set it up where the power is in the house. All you have to do is call Pep, Pepco or BG&E or whatever electric company there is and for them to turn the power on. Amen? So there is power. We've just got to activate it. Activate it with our belief. Activate it with our trust. Activate it with our word. Amen? Activate it with us trusting in God and denouncing every word from the enemy. Amen? For we know he is a liar and the father thereof. Amen? There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. chain. Come on, there is power. There is power. Chain, break every chain, break every chain. How many 
now there's an army. There's an army rising up. Yeah. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. Yeah. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. There's an army rising up. There's an army. in the army if you did not have enough strength in your upper extremities to hold up the shield you were not allowed to be a part of the army because you were considered a weak link but I've come to let us know that in the army of the Lord there is no exclusions the only thing you have to do is confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and let him into your heart your weaknesses will not exclude you because he says my strength is made strong in your your weakness hallelujah when we are weak God makes us strong he says that we call on the power of the living God he will rise up within us and that we will be able to do all things through him so we can confess and profess amen and walk in victory and walk in claiming to be a part of his army because he is in us and greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world so wherever you are open up your mouth and declare this morning sir Serve the devil notice that you are that army that is rising up to serve him notice and to remind him that there's power in the name of Jesus and every chain is being destroyed right now in your life. Don't say it in hopefulness, say it in faith and trust and confidence that every chain is being broken. You may not see it with your visible eyes, but in your spirit you are to believe it and proclaim it and see it. Amen. Hallelujah. For the Lord God operates in the spirit and not in the natural. Amen. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. Yeah. There's an army. Break every chain, 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 break every chain. Break every chain. Come on, wherever you are, just tell the Lord to break every chain. There's no chain that we want to be continue to be held on to us. We want every single chain to be broken. 
We want total healing, total deliverance, total freedom in the Holy Ghost. And God is strong enough, powerful enough to do it. There's no demon. There's no stronghold. There's no chain. There's no sin. There's nothing that God can't break. There's nothing stronger than him. He is the almighty God. He is God all by himself. He made us and we did not make him. Oh, hallelujah. Those little G's were made by us. Hallelujah. And have no power but the power we give it. But the Lord God Almighty, the creator of the heavens and the earth, amen. He made us and all power is in his hand, amen. Even when we don't believe, amen, it does not take power from him. He still has power and is still in control. He's still able to do exceedingly and abundantly. There's nothing too hard for him. There's no demon too strong for him. There's no demon that can have residence for any amount of time that he does not have the power to get rid of. I'm reminded of the story of the man that was in the cemetery and that was chained up because the demons that had a hold of him that was so strong that they had him in fetters, amen, and he would break out of it, but he was always, amen, in the cemetery chained up. But one day he met a man named Jesus. One day he met the son of the living God. He met God in the flesh, amen. And the Bible says that God set him free. And when he was found, he was found clothed, dressed in his right mind. Chains had been destroyed and broken. They had been put on him. The demons did not have a hold on him anymore. So I encourage you this morning, don't accept whatever chain that is in your life. Believe and confess and profess that it is broken in the name of Jesus, for there is power in the name. There's power in the blood of Jesus Christ. We bless the name of the living God this morning. We give God glory for each and every one of you. We pray in this season of 2021 that God will do bountiful things in your life, that he will get the glory out of your life, that you will bury the old, amen, and accept the new, that you will hold fast to the to, to the word that says that all things are passed away, all things are made new because of him, amen. Not because of ourselves, but because of him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let go of the past so that you can embrace and see and live in your future, amen, in your present, amen. The past will hold us bound, amen, that we will not be able to enjoy the present or the future, but we have to let it go, and every time the enemy wants to bring it back up, we have to, amen, pull out the shovel, the word of the living God, and let him know it is dead, it is buried, and cannot come back. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the living God. We thank God this morning for freedom, amen. We thank him, amen, for his spirit, amen. We thank him for truth this morning. We thank him for reigning, reigning, R-E-I-G-N-I-N-G, and hallelujah. We bless God for R-A-I-N-I-N-G because we need the water to rain upon us, amen. We need his spirit, amen. We need his word, amen. We need him each and every hour. We need him, amen. Bless the living God. I'm going to get out of the way. As we make way for the word this morning, may our hearts be open to receive the word. Amen. Hallelujah. And we serve the devil. Notice that you have no place. The word will take root and it will bear fruit. We ask, oh God, that you would touch ears, oh God. Fine tune our hearing that we may hear clearly and distinctively your voice, oh God. Touch our minds, clear up the clutter, Lord God, clear up the doubt, clear up every our own under our own knowledge and our own understanding. Clear it all up, oh God, that we may understand by your spirit what you have to say to us, your church. In the Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you all. I'm going to get out of the way, and we're going to make room for our bishop to come forth with the word, amen. If you have your Bibles, uh, your smartphones, your smart devices, flip over to Genesis, the 11th chapter, amen. This morning's message, the language of salvation. Bless the name of the Lord, amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Don't stop praising him, continue to give God praise and glory. Hallelujah, happy new years, happy new years to everyone, amen. A new day, amen, a new day. This is the day 
that the Lord has made. We will what? We will rejoice and be glad in it. You might not feel glad. Things may not be glad, but we still rejoice because it is a day that the Lord has made. A day that we can give opportunity to give him praise and glory and worship him. Amen. So, Lord, I pray right now, I, I just thinking about the song, amen. It says, you know, Lord, take your place. Lord, take your place. And that, that God can break every chain. You know, God is already in his place. You know, he's already sitting on the right hand of the Father. So what do you mean by, Lord, take your place? Take your place in my heart. Take your place in my life. Amen. All other names and all other things just don't even count. Amen. Pastor said it early. Amen. Exhorting us to let the power of God break every chain. We thank God for this new day. For this new day. Somebody say new day. Every time we wake up, no matter the time, the hour, somebody say it's a new day. So we ought to give God praise. It may be some things going on that went on yesterday that's the same thing, but it's still a new day. Amen. Amen. People may change on you. Things may change on you, but somebody say it's still a new day. So we give God praise and we give him glory because he is worthy of all praise and glory. Amen. We thank God for you joining us. And we continually, always, as I always say, we continue to pray for those who are affected by uh, the pandemic. We all are in different ways and in different forms. But we pray for those who are really feeling it, those who don't have a job, those who are not working, those who are really going through it. We're fortunate enough by the, by the blessings of the Lord to be able to work through this. We ought to give him praise. But in, if we're not working and God has kept us through this, we ought to give him praise. No matter whatever state, no matter whatever state, we ought to give God praise and we ought to give him glory for what he's doing in our life. Amen. And we continue to pray for one another and lift one another in prayer. But there is a theme, uh, even though the calendar year has ended and there's another year that has begun, yet God's season and timing does not end on 31st of January and his season and time does not start January 1st. Amen. His calendar may be an ending of one season of something happen in the middle of the year, or it may stop at the beginning of some other year. So God's season, God's timing, even though we keep time here on earth, his purpose and his seasons for doing things, we're still, amen, in the season of God. We're still in the season of God. Amen. So I just want to give God praise again for those who are joining. Amen. And there's a there's a theme here. There is something that, that God desires to do in our life. There is a craving. There's a hunger. Uh, there's a great desire to see, to, to see God even work in today's society, in the times that we're living in. Has the power of God fallen? Has the power of God failed? Um, some may say, well, where are you, God, and all that is going on? Where are you? Where are you, Lord? And I'm here to tell you that even now, even now, God can still save. How many know that God can still save? Amen. He can still deliver. He can still make free. Not set free only, but make free. Amen. Whom the Son set free, this word says, is free indeed. You know God also makes you free. Amen. And so we just thank God. That's why the song, I believe, is very important that uh, he can break every chain. Turn your Bibles, amen, to Genesis, the 11th chapter, amen. And there are two scriptures I want to read. And just bear with me, amen. And I'm just going to share with you like God has shared it with me or like he's just in my heart because we're living in a time now of two things that are happening, I believe. We're living in a time of great division and we're living in a time, I believe, that there's going to be great unity. Uh, the question is, what kind of division are we and what kind of unity are we? What kind of division are we? What kind of unity are we as mankind? Not just in America, but all around the world. People are crying for answers. People are in a, an anxiety state. People are, are, are stressed and fatigued because life has been altered. Uh, we have to do things different. We have to have to plan ahead, set ahead because of what's going on, not just in pandemic, but just in the world alone, that we truly are living in our time to fulfill what we are supposed to fulfill in our time. Amen. In Genesis, the 11th chapter. We're all familiar with this. 
but I always say God is always showing us something to the other side of his word and what he's doing about us and through us. So I want to start from verse three. And verse three says, and they said to one another, go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime and had they for mortar. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us, listen, let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth. Let us build a name for ourselves. Let us build a name. Let us come under one name in mankind so that we're not scattered. Mm. Okay, now listen, it says, it says, uh, and the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men built. It says, and the Lord said, behold, the people is one. And that, it said this, they, uh, uh, it says, and they have all, what, one language. And this they began to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. I want to pause right there. Do you not know that when Adam and Eve uh, 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 did that which they weren't supposed to do in the Garden of Eden, did you not know he ran them out of the Garden of Eden? Amen. Do you know why he ran them out of the Garden of Eden? Because now they were in sin, but then there was also a tree of life there. And if, if they would have got to the tree of life, then they would have remained in their sins for eternity. So God had to set an angel by the tree of life so that they would not go by it. Now, it wasn't just Adam and Eve. You have to understand there were many men and women there. So that's just another sermon by itself, another teaching by itself. But I just want you to understand. I want you to keep that in thought as we're reading even about the Tower of Babel. And the Lord said, verse six, and behold, the people is one and they have all one language. And this they begin to do. Now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. So in verse seven, and let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence, from the, upon the face of all the earth. And they left off to build the city. Your last verse, therefore, is the name of it called what? Babel, because the Lord there confound the language of all of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad. Now they wanted to make a name for themselves so they wouldn't be scattered. But now we're seeing that they are scattered. Let's go to Acts. Real quick, Acts, the first chapter. Thank you for being patient with me. The second chapter, I'm sorry. Acts, the second chapter. We know, we already know, but I, I'm gonna. If you be patient with me, going somewhere here. It says, and when the day of Pentecost was what? Fully come. They were with all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And then they say, and then there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in tongues or in other languages as the Spirit gave them utterance. I want to pause right there just for a second because I think it's important. The language of God or the power of the language of salvation or the power of the language of God. And I just want to share something with the Lord revealed to me in the scripture. Because every time you read the word, there's something more that God is showing you that you did not see before. There is a truth in the wisdom of God concerning his will in this new year. We know that without God or the guiding of the Holy Spirit, we can do nothing. The Lord always functioned in the unity of his spirit. Even in Ephesians. The fourth and the fifth chapters, it speaks about keeping the what unity of the faith, that there's one body, there's one faith, and there's what? One baptism. Jesus said uh, to this rock, meaning himself, Jesus says, upon this rock, talking about himself, I must what? Build my church. 
There is only one true church, and we know that it is Jesus Christ and his will for mankind to be saved and delivered. There is one, there is no one church of itself that is true because of its name or belief system. There's no one church that is true because of its name and its belief system. It is because its foundation is built upon Christ, who is the chief, what, cornerstone. Mm -hmm. Ever since Christ gave the great commission to go and preach the gospel around the world, it has been one move with one purpose and with one reason. And that is Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man what comes to the Father except through him. I know we know this, but we always must be refreshed and renewed by day because the time we're living in, if we do not let our heart and our mind and our spirit be cleansed by the word, then we'll forget who we're serving and where he's brought us from. And so we must always remember something that God did, something God changed in our life. Did he just change my language or did he change my heart? Look at how God used, look at God has used a language. Listen, listen how God has used a language to divide and yet use a language to unite. We have so many, uh, we have so many times read what God did when Nimrod set his mind to build the Tower of Babel that we, the scripture we just read. But it wasn't called the Tower of Babel before the language divide. It was calling, it was building a tower to make a name for themselves. Yeah. So the, the, the Tower of Babel was called because we understand the scripture says that God there confounded their language. They were going to make a name for themselves. We got a lot of people today that are trying to make a name for themselves. Amen. And the Bible said the Lord came down and confounded their language, meaning let us go down. Listen, let us go down and divide their purpose. Mm. Let us go down and divide their purpose. For the people are as one and there is nothing that will stop their purpose if we don't change the language. Mm. Now, God didn't come down to confound their language because they were going to reach heaven. Because if you get a certain place in the atmosphere, there's no more oxygen. So they were never going to build a tower to heaven. God was not in threat of somebody reaching heaven. No, he said, listen, they're, they're building a name. They're building something. And so let's go down and change the language. Let's go down and stop their purpose. Because the language was speaking one thing, so therefore they were building on that one thing, and they were trying to build a name for themselves. Listen, now this bring this 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 to bring home this point in our walk with God. There should be one language in our life, and in our families, and in the house of God. Amen. Shouldn't there be one language? I, I, I have to just pause for a second and look at the similarities of what happened in the Tower of Babel and what happened in the upper room. When God came down to fill them with different languages, but didn't fill them with the power of the Holy Ghost in Babel. Check it. When God came down, he came down to change their language. Yeah. He didn't give them any power. He came down to change their language. I want you to understand this. If, you, if we're not doing God's will, he'll divide you without power and you'll be on your own without him. So he, he baptized them with another language, but he didn't baptize them with power. Oh, come on. There's power. The song said there's power in the name of Jesus. The word of God said that there is no other name whereby a man can be saved except what? Through Jesus Christ. So God said, let us go down and let's change the language. And when he changed the language, it made them powerless to try to build something that was not in the name of the Lord. Doesn't that sound like us today? Do you not know that if God wants to do something in your life, do you not know he'll change the language in your life so the others can't follow you? <laughs> okay, I'm going to slow down. I'm going to slow down. God baptized them and the language was changed. So God baptized them. He baptized them, but didn't fill them with power. The language changed, stopped their cause. 
and building, and it divided them. It caused them to go different ways throughout the world because there was no war, no more one language. Now, after they left Babel, God, listen, after they left Babel, after they left, God did not change their language back to where it was. Whatever language God gave them remained the same. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. I'm, 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 you know, somebody said he can turn it around. See, 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 the language remained changed throughout centuries, throughout decades, throughout thousands of years, whatever language was given to the, a group, they taught it to their children and the language remained. God did not turn it back to having one language because the language they had was about themselves and not about glorifying God. So God baptized them with a different language, but not with power. Because his power would lead, would lead to his, the power that God would give would lead to himself. No man, no to, to no man to own a tower. That's what they were trying to build. You know what they were trying? They were trying to build a tower of self and not a tower of God. The Bible says, except the Lord build the house, they that build it, build it in vain. God will cause a division. Now, we always some of the enemy. You know, the enemy called division. Yeah, he does. But now it's clearly seen that God came down to stop their cause, to divide their purpose, to, and, and just change their language. And then, so understand the power when God changes something. But in this case, it changed it, divided. It caused them to go in separate places. God was setting us up. He was setting us up. He, he was doing the same thing he did in the Garden of Eden. He chased them out so that he could later redeem them. He chased them out so they wouldn't remain in their sin. He chased them out so that they, that they can have a redemption because he said, I'm going to come and, and, and you're going to bruise the serpent head. And he's going to bruise your heel. Somebody said, God is merciful. Somebody said, God is merciful all day. His mercy endured forever. Now, let me slow down here because I want to try to uh, connect this and how the Lord showed it to me. He changed their language. And it caused, you know, the Lord says, you know, your enemies should be those of your own household. Do you not know that I come to bring, he said, I didn't come to bring peace. I came to bring a sword. When God comes to change something, it divides from whatever self-motivation reason. Come on, somebody. Yeah. If God wants to do something different in your life, he may cause the language. You, you, have you ever been in, a, in, a, in an argument or in a conversation? Have you ever been in a situation where no one is understanding one another and they're speaking English? Have you ever uh, have you ever been in a place where you, you you're speaking something and, and you and you're speaking the same language, but you're not speaking the same language? Because anything that man is trying to do on their own, God will confound. God will cause a misunderstanding because it's not being done in his name. This is, this is not talking about uh, 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 the world. It is, but it's also talking about the individual. It's talking about us individual and how God, the power, what the Lord did, he set us up for redemption. Because if he didn't, this is that the people, nothing will stop them. Meaning, if they, if Adam and Eve would have ate the tree of life, then there's nothing God could do for us. Wow. And if we don't go down and change their language, then there's nothing we can do for them. He was setting us up for redemption. Somebody say he set me up. Oh. The, 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 so the Bible says, of course, set the Lord down. So now let us look at Acts 1 through 4. They were, first of all, in the upper room being in what? One accord and with one mind. Doesn't this sound like Bible? They were with one mind, with one language. Doesn't it sound like Bible? But, but, but listen, they were in the upper room in one accord and with one mind. But yet the cause was different. Yes. They were gathered because Jesus told them to go wait for yes. the promise yes. from the Father. Oh, come on, somebody. Yes. God was about to do another thing. Somebody said God's about to do another thing. God is about to change it up. Amen. If When he first changed it up, amen, it told everybody to scatter. But now you find some people in the upper room. Oh, my God. And in verse 4 of Acts, 
it says that they were being filled with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak with other languages or tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance, meaning as the Spirit gave them speech, as the Spirit gave them utterance. But two things happen here. One, they were not only filled with languages, but they were also filled with the power of God. <laughs> now, now, stay with me. Look at the correlation between Babel and Pentecost. One baptism caused division because they were building in their own cause, and now on Pentecost, they were being filled to bring unity for God's cause. Yes, yes. But the language wasn't changed. It was shifted. Mm. Check this out. Now, look at this. When the 120 were in the upper room and, 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 and speaking another language, they were not, of course, speaking their own language, but they were speaking the language to the people that came from other countries. Yes, yes. Check it. Yes. God was giving others. They were speaking the language from other countries that were coming to the Pentecost, were coming yes. to the Day of Atonement. Now, these people that were coming from countries, they had their language ever since God confounded it in Babel. Yes. Remember, God did not change the language back. So, so whatever dialect or whatever the language you had, it passed through generations. So now God says, I'm doing it. This is in my name. This is in my cause. I'm building my church upon my by this, upon this. There should be no other church. There should be there's only one church, and that's God. That's Christ. So he feels them. And he baptized them. Listen, he baptized them with a language they weren't born with. He baptized them with power they didn't have before. Because the power and the language he was giving them was not for their cause, but it was for his. Somebody said the language of salvation. This is important to understand as far as what God is doing. Wow. Wow. God brought people from different nations that spoke different language only to hear their language spoken through a people who didn't know their language. Look at the, look at the, I'm always awed. I'm always wowed by what God does. I, I can never get enough of just how awesome and how he's the, what the almighty God and how he does things, how he can download something to mankind and it not be in his name and it'll cause division. I'm going somewhere with this. Stay with me. Now, remember, I said God never changed the language of man back to one language, but bringing what he had changed in Babel to one and only true tower. The only true tower, and that is the tower of God. That is the tower of Christ. That's only one true tower. Amen? Amen. That, it was named the Tower of Babel because he changed. He, he baptized them with the whole alphabet system, he changed the language because what they were doing, they were not doing in his name. I know we know this, but stay with me because it speaks to us today. It speaks to us today. This brought about unity. This brought about the people coming together. This was a people who wasn't building for themselves, but building for God. I said earlier that God has given one language through, listen, he's given one language. Listen, listen, he's given one language through many language. And that was the language of salvation. That if I'm speaking uh, Spanish, if I'm speaking uh, French, if I'm speaking uh, uh, Portuguese, if I'm speaking African, if it, it doesn't matter what language I'm speaking. There is one language that God has done through many languages, and that is the language of salvation, the language of love, the language of hope, the language that he is God, and there is no other God before him. The language of salvation, the language of God. I've said this before. How do we speak to a generation whose language is different in our time. Lord, what method of sharing the gospel in 2021? How, what method, how do we do it, Lord? We need to pray, Lord, don't just give us tongues. Come on, don't just give us tongues, but a different language uh, 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 or a different language, but give us power. Somebody say, give us power. See, see, when he changed the language in Babel, there was no power. But now there is power. Somebody said, there's power in the name. 
of Jesus from on high to convince the children of men that Jesus is Lord. The message haven't changed. The time has changed. But I believe that there's been another confounding. I, I believe that God has, has done it again. I believe God came down and changed the language. I, I believe that it happened some years ago. Why? Because a nation that's once built on the word of God has now tried to get a name for itself. Any nation, anytime you build on God, you better stay with it. But if you don't build on God, God will come down and divide a nation. Yeah. He'll cause the states and he'll cause people in the nations and cities to not understand one another. Now, let me ask you a question. We've never seen a great divide like we've seen it today. Mm. Everybody want to say it's the devil, it's the devil. Yeah, it's, it's enemy, it's sin. But, 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 but because of man, but because of man, we have gone from God to self-effort. We have gone from God to self-building and self-perpetuating uh, our own interests instead of staying with what we were changed from. You know, a lot of people can change their language to sound like they're children of God, but their heart is not changed. Ooh, come on, Bishop. You got a lot of people that are saying one thing and doing another. That sounds like a powerless person to me. Why? Because they changed the language, but they ain't got no power. But we need to get in the upper room. We need to get in a posture position where God can, come on, somebody. God can not only fill us with a change conversation, but a change. Is it be not conformed to this world. Don't be conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I need to have a different language of the heart, not just talk like I know, but know what I know by walking with them. This is powerful. Because right from before our eyes, we have seen God turn around man's plan into his own plan. <laughs> Come on, dude, I hope this is helping somebody today. Lord, am I speaking the language? Am I walking the language in the power of God? Or am I sounding like I've changed, but nothing has changed? Am I sounding like a child of God on Sunday, but living like the devil on Monday? Is my language changing? Is somebody listening to my life? See, your language is your life. It's not what you're saying out of your mouth. Your language, oh, my language, my language is my life. What is my life? If my life is not of the Lord, then my life is divided. It may seem like the world is promoting itself. The world, not just America, but the world. But they're promoting themselves in a language that has been changed, but without power because it's not God. Except the Lord build the house. They, they build it. What were they building? They were building a name for themselves. This is, this is powerful. Here is the question. Are we today building our own cause or cause of God? Somebody said, well, I'm building the cause of God. Okay, how much of that cause does he have? Remember, there is only what? One faith, one, faith. one baptism. So we are part of one church. Does God have to come down and see that his church is building floors for their own purpose or his? Has the church changed the manual of the scriptures? Have they twisted? Have we have we developed our own theory and doctrinal message? Or, or does God come down and find they're not speaking the language I gave them? They're not exercising in the power that I gave them. When God does something, he'll check in on it. God has been checking his church for 2,000 plus years. And those are some are starting and those are some who are fallen. The church of the living God has never fallen. The church of God has always th thrived. Who is the church? We are. Upon this rock, I build you. And in building you, I'm building me in you. Yes. I'm building me in you. Now, let me ask, are we allowing God to build his tower in us? Or are we allowing ourselves to build something else? Because we can always easily know because our life is so divided. My life is going to be divided if I don't build it in his name. That goes, I don't care what title you got. I don't care. I don't care if you're king, queen. I don't care if you're bishop, pastor. I don't care evangelist. It does not matter. If God will come down to check to make sure everything is for his cause. Amen. 
in the moment that we change that, we lose that. I hope we're hearing. The scriptures, listen, the scriptures state, the scripture says, whatever we do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord. Somebody say name change. Name change. See, it, it, my, my, my name is changed from me, myself, and I to him. <laughs> my name is changed from my own cause to his cause. He came down in the upper room and he changed not only, but 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 they, they were already being changed on the inside by the cloven tongue. They were being empowered, but they didn't, their language remained the same, but the message was, be, was be given to the change he made thousands of years ago because now was the time. And remember the scripture says, and there were many souls gathered to the church. And God, there was unity, they were coming together and they counted all what they had as one. But if we're not with the plan of God, there's an example, even when God is promoting unity of his love, we don't want to end up like Ananias, Sapphire. Where we keep back, where we keep back, but it's already ours, but give it to him. And so their life were divided. The faith was not, but their life was divided. And each of them had an opportunity to state their cause. We have an opportunity to state our calls before God, pledge an allegiance to him, unto the everlasting God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I hope this is helping in this new year. We don't know what the next day may bring, but the language of salvation is the same. Yet the methodology or the method change, the method change for the glory of God. When he did what he did in Bible, it was for the glory of God because he let him know you can't do nothing without me, especially if you're doing it yourself. So I'm going to divide you. I'm going to help you out. I'm going to help you out. Yet the method has changed. When America started to build a nation under God, they were on the right path. But the moment they start building for their own name, then the nation at some point divides. We've always had division because everybody's trying to stake their name and not hear the calls. All around the world, nations are divided because their cause became about them and their name became about themselves instead of God. Let us pray today. Let us pray today, house of God, that God once again will pour out his spirit and his power so that the world may hear and be convicted to turn to God and turn away from building their own name, even within the church. All the letters that were written, Paul, written were to the house of God, was to the church. Amen? And so the language changed. I said earlier, and I'm going to say it again. When God's about to do something in life, can I, can I go a little further? When God's about to do something in life, he had changed the language. Because he wants to take you places. But see, if we don't accept the change. We can't get the power. And we're trying to do things on our own without the power. We can't do it without the power, the spirit of the living God. We can talk a word, but can we live in that word? Or can that word live in us? We can't forget that when we became born again, did he just change and say, I'm, 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 I'm saved now? But how was the life, how's the life language? Is the life language being developed into the building of what Jesus said upon this rock, I will build my people? Amen. We need to know that today. So that's something that we need to know. Let us pray this. Let us turn. We have seen great divisions like never before in our nations. That, it, that is because the language of the cause has changed. No one is understanding one another anymore. Check it. We are all in this nation speaking a cause or an agenda that is not from heaven. And we are trying to build our own tower to heaven or our own road to salvation. The tower they wanted to build to the heavens would have placed them in a position of being higher. Check it. Man 
always trying to exalt himself. Who does that sound like? Who does that sound like? How art thou fallen? How art thou fallen on morning? How art thou fallen? Because he forgot who he was. And so God changed his language. God changed his form. God changed. So it's important to understand what the Lord did. I'll go back in quick reference. God gave them the language that they never spoke before to a people whose language was changed before they were even born. God is saying one thing. I am the almighty God. There is no other God besides me. And so we are all in this nation. We have to remember in the world. Now there, listen, listen, I have to say this. Now there will be a deceptive voice in the near future that would seem to be speaking everyone's cause, but not God's. And I want to say this. There is going to be a voice that's going to seem to speak all and everybody's going to will be able to understand and relate to all peoples. But but his cause is not to God, but his cause is to himself. The Antichrist will appear to build a bridge of unity only to cause division at the end. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? That when God does something, bring about a divide, how the devil does something to bring about a divide. See, see, God divided because man was trying to do it on their own. The Antichrist is going to try to bring together so he can divide and get man to be against God. But the Bible says, if it were possible, the very elect would be deceived, if it were possible. But thank God, as Paul said, that we are, we are aware of all the devil's devices. We are aware of the devil's trick. Be, be sober. What, what says? Be vigilant for what our adversary, the devil, is walking around seeking whom he may devour. Who devour whom he may rip up in spirit, rip up in mind, rip up in soul, rip up who. So, so we got the unity. Somebody say unity. We've got to pray. When they was in the upper room and when the Holy Ghost failed, they were, they were one faith, one baptism. This is important. Because I remember somebody saying, and it's, it's, it, there's one vision, not division, one vision, not television, one vision. Hallelujah. And in another place, Paul says, the day of the Lord, that that, that, that that day of the Lord should not overtake us by surprise, for we walk in the light and not in the darkness. Some might say the language of salvation. What does this message have to do with us today? We are to live the language of God. We ought to be walking examples of not only a changed language, but a changed life that we ought to be encouraged, um, that it, it speaks to all of us. If you wanna know why there is great divide around the world, it's not one man, it is mankind that is not listening to one God, the only true and living God. And it behooves us, as Paul says, take heed lest we find ourselves cast away. Take heed. Why? Because if we're not staying on the path that is right in the word of God, then there is going to, God will come down and confound things in our life. And we won't know which way we're going. Because the cause have to be that of Christ. The cause have to be that of a shouting and a crying. Here. Sound the alarm. Sound the alarm of the language of God. So when he sees his rock, when he sees his church, when he sees himself in us, then he's glorified. And when he does not see himself in us, he's still glorified in this respect here that we can't do nothing without. Him. We cannot build without. Him. It could be built. They did start. They got, they got to a high level. They got to the high level. God may allow something to happen at a certain level, but he'll cut it off at a certain point. We're never going to get to the point where we, you know, I can do this without the Lord. I'll show you I don't need God. No, we need the Lord. 
The word of God says, people need what? The Lord. Saints of God, I pray today that we are like those in the upper room, that we are praying, Lord, how do we empower us? Empower us not just to speak another language in a sense, but speak the language where my, whereby they may hear and say, what must I do to be saved? That God can still deliver, that the alternate change, we can still function as a house, we can still function as a church, we can still share, spread the gospel, no matter what state. Paul said, I learned to be both a base and, and what? To be lowly, to be humble. I've learned to be hungry and, and, and full. I learned to be clothed and I learned to be naked. Whatever state I am, I learn to be content, not in the sense that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to stay here. No, no, I'm content to wherever, wherever God and however God uses me, I'm going to be content. And I can complain about what's going on. But as much as we claim, uh, 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 we complain, can we pray? Can we seek? Can we, can we, can we lift up the banner? Can we lift up the banner? He is our banner. Amen. So we're living in the time, saints, where we continue to pray. We continue to believe God. And we play how the how-to factor is uh, it's been said for the past month, and the Lord just placed it on my heart. And that is, we have to posture ourselves. Take your place, Lord. Take your place so that you can empower me, not just to talk the Bible, but to walk the living example. None of us are perfect. We're still growing. It's a process. So don't take this in the sense to say, okay, well, I'm not there yet, so am I divided? No. Listen, as long as we are following the process in our life of God, we're okay. It's only when we start adding and taking away and oh, when we start doing that, then we, we get in trouble. And well, God will always check on his house. God always checks, listen, on his house. So let's go down and see what they're doing. He already knew, of course, but he's always checking. Hey, my child, daughter, son. Are you following me? Are you building your life? Am I in you, building through you, in you? Am I sharing through you the language? Amen. And we can say, Lord, what you have given me, I've profited to your glory. Amen. So that he can say, well done, enter in. Well done. So we, I'm going to pray. Pray with me. If this is a, uh, something that is really just uh, touch your heart and you, you begin to see now I can understand why I'm not being understood or now I can understand why there's such a bit because if we're not for the purpose of God there is a divide and it's not necessarily the enemy did that but it's, it's God saying look you're not going to build anything and no one has proven God wrong I haven't seen anybody prove God wrong yet no one the devil was the first one to try I shall have sinned he found out real quick he still got the footprints in his butt when he got kicked out Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we give you praise and we give you glory. Continue, Lord God, we gather ourselves in one accord, even now, even through, through the airways, even through social media, Lord God, you still can move. Let your anointing move wherever, Lord God, your people are today. Everyone that's listening, everyone that's hearing, Lord God, we pray, empower us, Lord God, that our life language will be that of you, that our living will be of you, that, that Lord God, how we live will speak louder than what we say that people will say, what must I do? Lord, let's not just impart your knowledge, but live the knowledge you've imparted. Lord God, give us wisdom. For you said anyone lack wisdom, let them ask of God. Lord God, we need your guidance, Lord. We cannot do this without you. And so God, we pray, everyone today, in this new year, this new day, Lord God, that our life be a language of God, a language of love, a language of salvation for your name's sake, the language of the kingdom of God to build your kingdom on the earth. In Jesus' name we pray and let the church say, Amen. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. I hope the word of God uh, blessed your heart and fed your soul. May heaven smile upon you. Can't wait until we come together again. May God keep you. May God keep you through all what's going on right now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless.